Are you triumphant this week? Are you triumphant in this month? Hallelujah. Are you triumphant this year? Glory to God. Well, come on, shout unto the Lord again with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord tonight. Amen. We are in our 30 days, the first day of 30 days of service. Hallelujah. Where we are declaring the healing of our land. And how many of you can testify to that fact that our land is in need of healing? Our land is in need of deliverance. It's in need of restoration and revival, not in the traditional sense, but God is doing a new thing. And only God himself has the power and the ability to heal this land. How many of you understand that scripture gives, scripture gives us the, the, the template. It gives us the blueprint for the healing of the land. It says, if my people, which are what? Called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek his face, and then turn, repent from their wicked ways. Then, that's the caveat, then I'll hear from heaven and I will forgive sins and heal their land. Hallelujah. Well, we want to welcome you tonight. How many of you feel welcome? Amen. Amen. Well, just look at someone. Don't touch them. Don't get all up in their face. Just look at them and say, welcome. Come on, say welcome to the congregation of the mighty. Ecclesial embassy where God stands. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We welcome you on behalf of our chief apostle. None other than Dr. Paula and Price. Amen. We're excited about what God has initiated in our 10 days of prayer. How many of you have been, were? How many of you were in our 10 days of prayer? And you can testify of God's goodness, of God's touch, of God's rejuvenating power, of God's delivering power. God moved in a mighty way in our 10 days of prayer. And Sunday was the icing on the cake. Hallelujah. God came and showed out as only he can. Glory to God. Well, it's time to express our faith and even extend our worship in giving. Amen? All right. I heard from this side, but this side, the amens were a little weak. Amen. So let me say that again, Prophet Angela. This side a little weak. We need some intercession. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're getting ready now to extend our worship and express our faith in our giving. Amen. Amen. How many of you understand? It's a privilege to give to God. It's a privilege to give unto God because what we're giving unto him is what he has given unto us. We're just stewards over all that God has entrusted unto us. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. So as the ushers are coming, if you need and or desire an envelope, extend your hand and the ushers will be so delighted to put an envelope in your hand so that you can write your three, four, and five zeros. Amen. 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 That's an opportunity for you to extend faith and believe in God that the day will come, that he will allow you that he will privilege you, that he will prosper you to the place where you can give a thousand dollar offering, not tithe, an offering. Your offering is a thousand dollars. Your offering is five thousand dollars. Hallelujah. It's time for us to not only declare that God is mighty and that we're mighty in him, but it's time for us to do due diligence and move to the next dimension and the next strata of faith, manifesting and embodying what we're declaring. Amen. I'm believing God that the day will come that my offering is $10,000. And if your offering is 10,000, then you know your income has to be sufficient in order to supply that need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dave, how you doing? Good evening, sir. Give us some giving music.
Father, you indeed are the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. And we declare miracles over our finances. We declare signs and wonders are part of our economic harvest due to our obedience, our faith, and our allegiance unto you. And so we thank you now, God, that the devourer is rebuked, that the devourer is exposed and disposed of. And we declare that as these seeds go into the fertile soil of this commission, the fertile soil of this charge, the fertile soil of this house, we bless you, God, that insufficiency is no more. We bless you, God, that we operate in the black and not in the red. We bless you, God, that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm, hallelujah, have been devoured and we declare and decree that our harvest is now that our harvest is now that our harvest is now in the name of Jesus the miracle worker the one who works signs and wonders let it be wrought in our finances in Jesus name amen now come on if you believe it give him a shout of glory give him a shout of praise hallelujah come on seal that prayer with your faith seal it with your worship we want to dismiss our children now our children are dismissed if they are in the sanctuary you are pronounced dismissed amen you are allowed to go so that you can be taught and educated in the word of God on your level amen hallelujah we want to admonish you uh, to read through your bulletin Amen. We will be receiving wonderful bulletins each week. And uh, we don't want to see the bulletins left on the chairs. We don't want to see the bulletins. That's that's AME. That's my AME. The programs. The programs. Amen. <laughs> Let me modernize my, my verbiage. The programs. <laughs> Amen. So uh, govern yourselves accordingly as it pertains to the programs. And again, we want you to most especially the prayer of salvation for those of you who have not yet, may not, as of yet, received Christ as your Savior or for family members. Amen. The prayer of salvation is here to help you and to uh, guide you in guiding and leading them in the prayer of salvation. And also, you'll see there in your program the list of speakers for the week. Hallelujah. And who else is better equipped to start us out tonight than none other than our chief apostle? Amen. Dr. Price. Hallelujah. I am anticipating to hear direct from the mouth of God. And as we progress through the week, as you can see there, we have other powerful and potent anointed speakers that will be releasing the mind of God from eternity. So we want to encourage you to press your way. Look at someone, tell them, press your way, press your way. Press your way every week. Come on, tell them, press your way every week. Press your way every week, every week. You don't know what God has specifically for you. You don't know what it is that God is going to do that's unique and specific from the previous night. And so you want to make sure that you are in the building. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Apostle Ashley, where are you? Amen. Apostle Ashley is here and Prophet CT is gone. Thank you, Prophet CT. Welcome again to the Congregation of the Mighty. The second year of our 30 days. I mean, we knew like when we did this last year, we knew, didn't we? It's going to be every year. And what an opportunity to establish a mainstay in the spirit and the natural for the Lord. It's these types of things that create a place in the spirit and in the natural for God to, for lack of a better word, schedule his moves with his people. We want God to move while we're moving. You know, Lord, hit me up on Sunday because I'm already here, but Monday through Saturday can be a little dicey. And then on the other side of COVID, I mean, how many people are just very comfortable watching from home, coming, not coming, a lot of ministries uh, stayed virtual, virtual, like you have a virtual Jesus. 
stayed virtual, cut back on their services, changed it up, got very entertaining to entertain people, to keep them coming to the house of the Lord. Meanwhile, and Dr. Price hit on this Sunday, my God, that was just yesterday about, but the Lord was gone. And it's it's harder harder now, I would say, in our country for sure. It's the hardest it's ever been to convince Christians why church is relevant and important. Because so many of them out there are not. That's not people's imaginations. They're not. There are a lot of churches that are not relevant for the Lord. They're not here for him. They're what Christians in name only. It's just on the building. And that's about as deep as it goes. And uh, having these types of assignments is crucial. Now, anybody who was raised what we call now, we call old school church. I mean, January was your 30 days of prayer. You had the something, the vigil every, we know oh, we're not sleeping for three weeks. And then there's always that one person in the church that's going to break out right when we're dismissing and keep it going for another five hours. <laughs> and you're like, okay. And you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the church. I mean, the church was the center of the community. It was the center of life. You had the midweek, the Bible study, the choir practice. You had the other things and the whatever things and the that thing. And basketball was played at the church. Even this building, the banquet hall, the ballroom downstairs was a gym. And under that carpet, the floor is still... And people would just come, teenagers to church. The kids would just hang out at the church all the time. Because it was like, hey, let's just go to the church. Let's play, shoot some hoops and play games and, and just chill. We didn't have all this technology to keep us separated and isolated from the people who were around us. And now it's almost like we have to campaign to have a campaign for the Lord. It's unheard of. And that's a shame. But we know that things are changing. And God is shifting and moving his body in ways that only he can. Church was powerful here yesterday. I mean, like, I'm stuck. And Dr. Price, God hit her on the stage. And we were like, whoa. But first of all, let me just say, because even if you watched online, Prophet Air Jordan CT. <laughs> By his God, he leapt over a wall <laughs> and jumped and scaled on his stage. When the power of God hit Dr. Price, she was standing over here. If you wasn't, weren't here, she was standing over here. And she said it, though. I mean, she said, God, do it. And he did. <laughs> and I think it surprised her that he did. And he and love it. But he, who I, I was stuck at watching. I said, oh, and I was like, I need to move. Like, I need to. I need to do something, but Prophet Air Jordan Johnson. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, yes. Well, we can't call you like Prophet Magic Johnson because we just can't be doing that in the house of God and everything that happened there. Right. And so, you know, you're uh, <laughs> you're Air, you're Air Johnson. And he he leapt over that wall. I said, Whoa, he still got it all right and didn't even limp away later. But how about today? You all right? <laughs> He said, I'm good. That was, and then when we we're up here praying for Dr. Price, or well, God was just doing what he was doing. And then boom, I said, who is this over here just breaking? They were like, that's Maxwell. I said, oh, oh, that's Maxwell. Go on in and get it. And then we just started seeing chairs shift around, like moving. And then Abigail was, no, boom, was next. And then over here, one of the, God hit one of the teenagers and she was crying. And her mother said, I was just putting the prayer cloth her and I went out and went down mind of my business and then in the balcony I know some of our saints had to have a catcher I'm like don't fall in this balcony I thought wow okay 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 that's just okay and that is a move of God that he did all by himself and we were on the heels of course 10 days of prayer 10 nights of prayer and creating a place for the Lord, a clean place. See, there are rules to the Lord showing up. There's the, the protocol, there's pro, maybe that's a softer word, okay? There's protocol, there are rules to the Lord showing up and to show up to not destroy. Because I mean, he'll show up for a couple of reasons, several. And ha ha, 
And first, he will test you to see how serious you are. How badly do you want it? Most of us want the come and rescue me moment. Anoint me to still keep running from you moment. Uh, I mean, we have all kinds of impure motives that we don't realize are very self-centered because of the doctrine and gospel that's been preached in the last 30 years for sure. And so in these 30 days, the theme, who is on the Lord's side? Because Dr. Price launched that campaign at the top of the year. Many of you probably are maybe almost all of you in the room have watched those broadcasts, followed that. We're staying with that theme of who is on the Lord's side. What most say, let him come to me. Which means you have to pick a side. And not with lip service. He didn't say, shout it out. He didn't say, give me a wave offering. He said, come over here. So it's obvious who is on the Lord's side. And, and I know many of us are in that stage in our life, job, family, career, whatever. I mean, now the, the um, vulgarity and profanity is so permeated society. I have clients that I'm advising and some have walked off of six figure jobs because they're like, I can't do it anymore. I can no longer have my name on this company because this is now what they stand for. Now, people always had their personal belief systems, didn't they? They always had that. But when it was okay, well, you believe what you believe, I believe what I believe, but you know, out front, this is what we're all here. But when all of that came to the front, a lot of people have made and are making very tough financial calls because they said, but I can't do that to the Lord. And they realize that they're being bought off now. What once was compensation and reward is now being bought off. And so it's it's shifted. The monetary people are being bought off to be silent on their job, quiet, getting we all, you know, I'm sure we all have advisements. People are conflicted about should I say something? I'm getting pressure from the executives. I have to make a decision if I should vote this way, work with this outside vendor or group or contractor. And that that's where we are. And for some people, their assignment is to stay in the darkness to be the light. And then other people, depending on your calling in life, it's like, hey, time to go. Exit stage left. But you have to know, you have to know what God has assigned you to do because the all the light can't walk away. And then it's just pitch black. And that's how we got where we are today. Saints afraid to do and say. So it really does depend on your circumstance, situation, and assignment. But that's that's where we are and in any place. And so this type of campaign to arm and equip the saints is essential right now. So you can have arguments where we're on the public forum because now everybody's getting called out in public. One of our college kids that was here for the weekend, he's talking about the teacher calling him out in class. In college, Jesus is a joke. All these things were just forbidden. I mean, you weren't even allowed to say that before. We're not allowed. And now it's open season if you're a Christian. It's open season if you name the name of Jesus. Now, I went to a restaurant actually the other day and then went back today to the other one. And I'm like, right, all the Buddhas just to get in the door. We, we, we are not supposed to have a Bible showing or a cross. And I'm like counting how many Buddhas and good luck charms are in the first six square feet of the restaurant. Is it enough? That's the question. Is it enough? I want you to think tonight about on the other side of this, no matter how many nights you're making it, those who are watching online, um, who do you want to be on the other side of this? What does being on the Lord's side look like for you? What does it look like for me? It's, it's different and the same. There are some things that are just universal. Those who name the name of Christ, Jesus is Lord. There are things that we will all do, but whether you are in high school, middle school, daycare. I mean, we have to arm our four-year-olds, three-year-olds on how to defend themselves and what they will and will not accept and be told what to do. What is that? Things we never, we were, we all grew up, most of us in the when pigs fly era. Oh, well, that'll happen. Now, as black folk, we used to say, well, that'll happen when we have a black president. Because we were like, that's never going to happen in the United States. And then it did. And we're like, oh, I guess we have to change that, huh? And then look what happened. Anyway, moving on. And so 
I'm like, that was an epic fail. And then we have now we're saying things that we would never imagine. Back in the day, um, a man could not step out in public dressed as a woman without being denied. So what are you being stared at? And now what are your pronouns? What is your, I saw, and every day it's a new identification definition. I don't even understand this. I just don't, but I do. I mean, we do, we get it. All that confusion, all that demonism to have it infused in people's psyche and in their soul to the point where it's normal because the goal is to normalize, just normalize, normalize. It doesn't matter if you're the minority, just normalize, normalize, bully, 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 normalize, use the law against people, uh, beat them upside the head with the constitution, have all of that. And then they'll have to either do it because they believe it's right or because they're afraid to stand up against it. And saints, we're walking around with a doctrine that tells us, well, that's not love if you say something. Well, it's the love of Jesus if, if I do. I promise you that. Because he was, he was very clear about his definition of love, which was doing what he said. In essence, my own apostle Ashley, what does the Bible say about the love of God? Do what I say. The way I say it. For the reasons I say it. Your opinion doesn't matter. Your sentiments don't matter. How you feel does not matter. Jesus knew, hey, Father, if, if there's a way that this thing could pass for me, but nevertheless, he knew the answer to that, of course. That's the whole reason he came. But the reality of dying is a real thing. Because I think we've all been there where we say yes to the calling, don't we? we? First of all, we beg God for the call. Lord, use me. He usually gets us in youth group. Watch what you promise God, guys. He usually gets you. Anybody get God in youth group? Oh, man, the retreat, the campfire, the wherever you were. Jesus just used me. He comes back for those words right when you're about to plan your future. He holds the future. <laughs> and because he lives, right? And then he comes for those vows. And we don't even talk about those scriptures or talk about vows. And he comes for them. And all of a sudden, we start the backpedal ministry. Do, do, do. Oh, but you know, I was young. I don't care. But I hadn't seen the world yet. I don't care. And we don't realize that that desire came from a real place that he put in us anyway, before we had life to tell us that's not what we want to do. That's why childlike faith is the faith to have. Okay. I love kids. The little ones. All right, we're doing this. Okay. Now every now and again, you have that smart one. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? You're too. Okay. Outside of that, especially when they're really little, whatever you say goes. We all got out of our house and realized that's not how everybody lives. Oh, we're poor? I didn't know we were poor. Huh. Oh, we're rich? I didn't know we were rich. Oh, we live in the up, we live in the down. Because it's just whatever it is, it's just normal. And should we ever return to that childlike faith in God, which is not infantile or weak, but it's a belief that doesn't have barriers. You ask a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a physicist. I want to be a basketball star. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a doctor. Well, okay, baby. We'll come back in 10 years. Because they believe they can do anything. Anything they see, they think they can be. Imagine if we had childlike biotic gospel faith that anything we saw Jesus mirrored his ministry after what he saw the father do. He knew he could do it because his father did it and does it. Let's take this thing to our next level of being literal in what we're doing next level because that's what time it is because these devils are real. Their spells are real. Anybody work in an environment where you know people are working witchcraft? Incantations? Leaving little things sprinkling around in the office? Having yoga at the end of whatever? Therapy? Dance? Uh, you know, definitely if you're a counselor, if you're in the arts, it's all steeped in that now. And you have to have a real Daniel prayer life. To not just say, Lord, 
provide my food, but to dismantle devils, to dismantle regimes, to take real authority in the workplace authority, on your job authority. Amen. So make sure that you are planning as much as you can bring as many people as you can to this because God wants to touch his people removing the opposition out of their souls that brokenness you get broken through life through other churches through home through your own decisions whatever you get broken and you can't go to war broken it's not the way you want to go because we are in judges five they we chose new gods as a country and wars at the gates and it's the gates of finance in the gates of the church, in the gates of education, in the gates of entertainment, all of that. But hey, we are the standard that God is raising up. And we have a general, bless God, an apostle who is doing and teaching us and modeling the works of apostleship. When you study what those apostles were writing about, it was this right here how you should conduct yourself compared to how the other gods required you to conduct yourself, how you dress and how you speak and how you treat your family and how you treat your spouse according to what those other religions and other deities were saying. Oh, just use up your staff and treat them like trash. No, no, that's not how the Lord does. It. Oh, just beat your spouse around who really cares. No, 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 that's, that's not what the Lord says. That's the works of apostleship as well to train us to live like Christ. Speaking of, a chief apostle on night number one. Come on, let's bless the one and only uh, Dr. Paula Price. We got paperwork. Yes. God bless y'all. Have a seat. We get ready to tap something. Uh, we got paperwork. Did anybody notice? We got paperwork. Isn't that wonderful? I am thrilled to be here. And I'm excited about what God's going to do. We're opening up the heavens. We're asking God to open his heavens over us. We're asking him to open our spirits and our souls for him. Oh, somebody finally came out of hiding. Because, you know, I was graced in the angel of God in there on you, brother. Amen. How are you feeling? Uh, see, exceptional sounds like Jesus. Amen. Good. Because we're going to put you in the steps team and just so you can step in the name. <laughs> we put you in the step team. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about what God is doing. We had a phenomenal, a super nominal day yesterday, didn't we? The Lord opened this thing up and just blessed us so good. So I'm expecting that that's the beginning of much. So we're going to talk about heaven and hell because they're real. I said to you, thank you, daughter. The Lord said to me Saturday morning, he said, I need you to talk about heaven and hell because y'all don't talk about that anymore. And they're real. And I'm getting ready to move in your planet. And a lot of people are not going to make this round. He said, if they're not born again, I have no reason to shield them. And did he not bear witness to the word with the young ones that got saved yesterday? That whole next generation? I was thrilled. I was just tickled pink and thrilled coming down of their own accord. Unless their parents, you know, threatened them. So we're going to talk about heaven and hell. And the reason we want to talk about it is the, the occult is giving us so much misinformation and bad information about it that people actually think that no matter what they do that they're safe we talked yesterday about salvation being more than coming to the altar sniffing and snotting telling god you're sorry he doesn't want you to be sorry he wants you to be different and we talked about not only that part but we also talked about you must be born again. We don't tell people that. As a matter of fact, I remember when we shifted from telling people they needed to be born again to they just needed to come to Jesus. So people came to Jesus 
as they were and stayed there. You know? My eyes work. And they stayed as they are. I don't think I've ever lived an era in the Lord where people were told over and over again, you don't have to change. You don't have to be different. Just stay as you are. God's so tickled to have you. First of all, God got so many beings. Let me tell you, if he doesn't, you cannot giddy him up just because you gone. This man has, we haven't thought about it, eight billion people on the planet at any given time. And you know a lot of them hit out from the census. So he's got eight billion people on the planet. Can you count the angels he has here? Can you count the devils? Can we count the creatures? We, you have no idea how massive this man is. And he's massive because everything that exists came from him. So I wanna shift your mind on salvation. I want you to think a little bit differently about it because salvation is not a religion, not a theology, not a doctrine, not a philosophy. It's not even your spiritual experience. So now that we know what it isn't, let's talk about what it is. Salvation is you being put back into your maker's being. See, that's very different. The reason paganism, polytheism, pantheism, all of that fails is because there's too many deities. Too many gods. That's what makes this, our faith, our redemption unique. Satan invented religion. He had to have some way to control the species he just hijacked. So he invented religion. Why? Because all of those angels that fell with him, all of those spirits that fell with him, they all needed a body. And his whole goal of tricking Adam was to see to it that he got access to the human genome. Why would he need access to the human genome? Anybody want to take a stab? Procreation, reproduction, even, even more than that, if we can make that a little more finite, he needed that so that he could have access to a body because he had none. The whole, you know, heaven, hell, the whole thing, everything is all about him becoming God, making himself God and having the power of physiological and not just ideological reproduction. So a lot of people are, are, are saved because of some ideology. I just believe God is, I mean, you know, why not? And yet they, they won't, they'll hide from their salvation when Satan puts it on the line. His goal was procreation to reproduce himself but here's what's so good about it. This is where it gets juicy. In the image and likeness of the God he's trying to replace. Isn't that what AI is doing? AI is working on reproducing a artificial version of the authentic human being. But guess what guys? God said to tell you, but we're the alphas. We are the alpha, and we're more than an intelligence. We are the alpha offspring of the Godhead. God made us in his image and likeness. Now, it's important for you to understand that because scripture says we were in Christ before what? Now, I need you to hear me. We were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Before is important if you're arguing with uh, a scientist or astronomer, uh, what is it, astronomer or whatever, because they say the earth is how old? Huh? Two to three billion years old. We're older than that. And yet we're younger. 
We're older than the oldest galaxy because God reproduced Jesus Christ before he did anything. I want you to think differently because when we have to face off with this, all of this nonsense, you've got to have the answers that make the point. So the human species began divine, began as God's seed. We were made in the image and likeness of God. Do you understand that why Satan keeps wanting us to feel inferior? Why he needs us to feel insecure? Why he wants us to think that he's more powerful than we are? You understand why he's doing that? Because the minute you wake up, he is your subject. And he's got to bow. You're suffering because he's blinding your mind. But I'm here to help you disintegrate the blind. There is nothing, when I got a hold of this, I got to tell you, I want you to know that thing changed me forever, especially since I was chasing the occult. And I realized the occult is the, feminine, uh, the inferior crime version of God. You, know, you do realize the occult is a crime machine. It's eternity's crime machine. You want to be strong in God? Just get in his truth and stop telling him what you're not and let him reveal to you what you are. Christ in us, the hope of glory. The occult has taken our seat and we gave it up. And we gave it up because we bought Satan's lie that we are just worms. We just, we just, we just lousy sinners saved by grace. I'm either saved or I'm a sinner. You're not going to tell me I'm, I'm either or. And I, and I didn't get saved to be a sinner. And you have all of this evangelical nonsense telling you you're still a sinner. So you're not trying to rise up in God. You're not trying to be strong in the Lord. You're not trying to tap into your new creation. You're not trying to get into the superpowers of the Godhead. You're so busy trying to let Satan be your God. We are the offspring of the Godhead. As he is, so are we in this world, is not a theological concept. It is a fleshless reality that you must flesh out in this life. Do you understand? That thing took that inferiority complex. I mean, I was inferior about everything. My hair, my fingernails, you name it, toes, didn't wait, nothing. It took me to get 35 to realize I was cute. Isn't that how it is when you are? You, you're dumb and, and young because you want to be everything but. We are why all of this was done. When Adam fell, he surrendered the human DNA, the human genome, to the serpent and Satan in the serpent. God did not kill us. He didn't have to. The serpent was already dead. That's why everything today, the more occult we get, the more it's about dead. The more it's about death. The more it's about, you know, killing. Look at, you know, Satan has taken over. You can't get away from death and, and, and killing. You can't get away from it. Television shows, movies, games, teaching, clothes, attire, all of that is because he said, I won. But what he didn't count on was us. The, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the worst giant to awaken. And he's doing his best not to awaken us. He wants us to stay religious and happy in our pews. And be happy because we run down and sing little songs as we put our money in a basket. He wants us to never, ever, ever know that he is our subject. See, we are the royal priesthood. Don't just listen to me and say, oh, wow, I want you to cogitate that. Don't just meditate. Cogitate. We are the royal priesthood. Royal means top. It means born of a sovereign. We are the royal priesthood. 
We are what? The holy nation. What is a, what is a holy nation? We talked about what holiness is. Holiness is what? Satan free. There's not a drop of him in our new creation spirit. And if we work it the way God tells us, we'll get him out of our souls. Holy means Satan free. How do I know that? Because God, if Satan had contaminated the almighty the way he contaminated his realm, God couldn't have brought us back. Jesus would not have had to incarnate. I want you to get this and don't let a devil tell you this is too deep because I'm going to tell you something. Y'all, y'all have sat there. Your kids taught people Harry Potter. How many pages in a Harry Potter book? Okay. How much? And yet you cry about the Bible. You see how he still has you? How many books have you read? All of these books on the occult, all of these books on the other world, the superpowers, the super this, and yet when it comes to God, da 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 is too much. You keep telling him, you keep telling Satan you're as dumb as he says you are. And then you work to prove to him that he is smarter than you. I will never let him win. I promise you I will not, not once. I don't care what it is. I'm I'm one of those. He cannot tell me to stay down. I'm getting up. Jesus got up with all power. So am I. I'm telling you, you don't realize how well he trained you to be under his foot. He trained you to admire him. He trained you to celebrate him. He trained you to attire him. He trained you. And he's dead. He's dead. God did not have to kill Adam. The minute Satan's dead, the minute Satan's dead spirit entered him, he died. The reason we must be born again is because we have to get out of Satan's genome. We have got to get out of the demonic DNA and cease being a hybrid the new birth is not about you going to church you go to church because you're born again or you want to be pew can't save you this altar can't save you you got born again for god to get another child born of his seed to be like him is it not written in your word that i say ye are god Did he not say that? He wrote that. Is it not? God called us gods. Why? Because he's our father. And guess what he is? He's God. We're like our dad. And the devil made you think, oh my goodness, that's sacrilegious. No, religion is sacrilegious. That's why they sound alike. We are the redeemed of the Lord. He bought us back with the blood of the lamb. Oh, somebody's going to catch a hold of this thing. He bought us back. And you know, he couldn't even use human blood. He had to use the same blood that he breathed into us. When he breathed the breath of life into our nostrils, our blood came with his breath. That is why he's the only way to get out of Satan's grip. We must be born again. So heaven and hell. We know that whether people tell you, I just think earth, earth itself is heaven, is heaven and hell. Baby, trust me, the people in hell will argue with you. I'm sure the people in heaven will argue with you. We don't have any of that that you all do here. We are born dead. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. So before humans went to hell, devils did why god had to quarantine their reproductive ability to kill he had to stop that that killing machine that they passed on through lucifer's fallen genes so he had to well when we when we open up the book of genesis where do we find satan in the water swamp thing See, we don't even put that together. He's a swamp thing. Meanwhile, we're brandy new. We're made on day six, new spirit, new soul. 
in the image and likeness of our God. We lost our likeness when Adam fell. So you, when you sit there and you, you know, half of you all, you got your kids watching all that wicked nonsense. You have no idea what you're doing. He's already converting the next generation through cartoon, cartoons, movie. And then you, and, and don't let anybody tell you, well, yeah, you know, you're just religious. No, I'm redeemed. You're religious because your God made up the rules of religion. By the time the Ten Commandments hit the planet, religious was in full, religion was in full swing, wasn't it? They just belonged to the religions of the fallen deities. God gave us the Ten Commandments to stop death from killing those who were in Christ before the foundation of the world. Not as a religion, as a stopgap. Romans 5. Death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of Adam. You know how we like to say, I don't know why I, I didn't do anything. If you have blue eyes, your kids can say, I hate blue eyes, and they didn't do anything to get them. Guess what they got? Blue eyes, honey, suck it up. Or buy contacts. And you know, 25 years ago, that was not an option. Death reigned from Adam to Moses, somebody has to hear the significance of that. What did Moses do? He superseded the righteous law of sin and death with the law of God. That's why when people say we don't we don't follow the law and the law is bad, that is a devil. Because Romans seven said the law was good and spiritual and meant to bring life. Did you all know it said that? He said, but I'm sold under sin. So the law on my sin nature does what it does. It goes after my sin to turn it into righteousness. And I want, you know, I, I, I've been living this so long, I have to remember, I got to read y'all some scripture. So y'all need some scripture. Just, just so y'all don't know that it's in the Bible. And if y'all got those sick, crazy lying Bibles, I need you to toss them. Need some lying Bible. They, you know they lying. That's why I tell every one of you, get the book. What book did I tell you to get? Look what's missing. You need to buy that book. Because that book, tell, it, it tested 40,000 versions of the Bible. That means all the other languages as well. I told you, I shared with you, I talked to a friend of mine and I was quoting 1 James 5 8. How many of you know that NIV took it out? Go and buy it, buy the book, look what's missing so you can see what else it took out. It took out a lot of God, a lot of Jesus, a lot of holiness, a lot of what would save your soul. Anything that was going to give Jesus a win, it took it out. This is important. Based on what I, I said, I want you to hear me. Romans 5 is just a powerful chapter. You should read it over and over again because it has a lot of nuanced answers to what's bothering us about Christianity, about our salvation. I, however, am going to go and start here. Revelation, I mean, excuse me, Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. And so death passed to all men, for that all have sinned. Because in God's realm, a seed is a field. You, if you don't kill things at the seed, you cannot stop its multiplication. Everything about God multiplies. I just spent the whole uh, day watching, listening to the, the animals. And I said, you know what, Jesus, I realized something, honey. I like to call him honey sugar. He likes that. I said, I realize that. I realize, Lord, that we don't know you. And I'm watching the jungle. I'm watching these animals scrap it out and fight it out. You know, the survival of the fittest and all of those things that they told us in the pew that was wrong. And that's God. 
I said, so God, you made this? I just wanted to make sure I was talking to the right God. So you made these animals out with each other? You made them fight for their life? You made them wrestle and, and play tricks on each other and hide out? There was one thing that got me. I said, now God, I know I know butterflies. I thought, but this is important. Because God said, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Why would he say that if he wanted us to be nice, good little boys and good little girls, according to the world standard? So there's this butterfly, and it starts out as a worm, so to speak. And this, but what it does is it has, when, it's, when it comes out of its first shell, it sounds like a queen bee. You saw that one. Sounds like a queen bee. And so it makes a sound that seduces all of the, uh, all of the ants. And I'm talking millions of them. And I mean, all of the bees, millions of them thinking she's their new queen. Because she sounds like the queen. Because they all have the inbuilt frequency of knowing what the queen bee sounds like. So she does that and, and they let her in. And when they let her in, she kills the entire colony. She eats them one by one. And they submit to it because she's the queen. Now they could wipe her out. I believe it was ants though, but I'm, I, 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 I could be wrong. I watched so many of them. But the whole thing is that the insect population could wipe her out because there's so many more of them. But they don't. She eats them until she destroys the entire population. And then what she does is she goes and she rebreeds herself. And when she comes out of her shell, she is a, a, a royal blue butterfly, one of the largest butterflies in existence because she has feasted on those who let her trick them. Now, our God came up with that. I had to have a little chat with Jesus on that one. I said, now, Lord, I ain't got no trouble to talk about, but I do want to talk about, did you really come up with that? And you know what he said? He said, yeah, well, it was interesting. I told Jesus, when we get to heaven, all of us are going to have to be in get to know Jesus classes. We're going to be in the basement of heaven because we're expecting this guy that we've heard preached about standing in the pulpit, nice, easygoing guy. We don't know that God's a warrior. He's a fighter. He's possessive. God is extraordinarily possessive. That's why he stays so far away from us because he knows the closer he gets, the more he of who he is, the more his possessiveness, the more his inability to let go and let anything just drift away from that thing takes over. He said, I do you a favor by standing, being, keeping you at arm's length. And that's where we are now, but we have moved into that place where he's enjoying us. When you think about anything that God brings close, defies death he brought Enoch close didn't he and Enoch just so made him so happy he took him he being that close with the Lord that intimate transformed him from what his name meant which is mortal isn't that something and most of us are running from God because we don't want to change because Satan has told us that if we, if we change, then nobody's going to like us. People don't like you now. That's why you're trying to find God. Come on, here. Everybody got folks that don't like them. I mean, this is the don't like you world. If you need people to like you, then you don't ever need to be you. Because to become God, God is disliked all the time. We are so busy telling you how, how wonderful he is to us, we don't realize people hate him. And they still haven't stopped him from being God. He's still on the throne. Still God. And you know what God said? I don't care. He said, do I care? 
He said, they're going to die. There is a passage in scripture that set me free. And it says, none of them can give a ransom for their soul. Neither can they keep their souls alive. Isn't that something? So why does he care? You don't like him? God's like you three score and 10 can't even hide from a cold. I mean, a cold could take you out. Can you imagine a man made insects that can kill us? Well, that's mother nature. Yeah, mother nature can only produce a baby. Father God makes the seed. I was watching the show and the woman kept saying, you know how we used to say, we say, oh my God. She kept saying, oh my goddess. Hallelujah, Australia. But do you know why I don't have a problem with that? When you say, well, you know, how do you know that God is not a she? I said, because if, if God is a she, then she's a stupid deity. Because it takes nine months to have a baby. And a man can shoot off millions of sperm in a second. If I wanted to reproduce quickly, it's just a little bit of science. Is that all right? Y'all all got with that? Can we say it? it your husband, why do you think they had so many wives in the Bible? Took too long for him to reproduce. So he needed a harem. Drop a seed, drop a seed. Some things are just scientific. It's not even theologic. It's just scientific. I said, well, then she's a dummy because she built herself to not reproduce at any particular rate. One kid at a time. First we got that, then we got the nine months after we get rid of the afterbirth blood and carrying on. Then uh, this man that made 70, 70, 80, 90 kids. So a man can reproduce faster than a woman. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's just bad math. I don't know if anybody handle money. Come on here. You want the bank that can give you a little something once every other year? Or you want the bank that's giving you something daily compounded? That's the difference. So I know God's a man. Now, it doesn't make men great because, you know, I met some that ain't, that ain't great. Present company excluded. You know, God and I talk like this. He is absolutely a lot of fun. We have, you know, we, we just have a, a, he's the one that told me about that. Not to mention, Adam came first. And she was in him until God let him finish naming everything. You know, so this whole idea that you got to get married as soon as you find out that you've grown, that's, that's Satan. Because he wants to put his genes in your tree. Understanding heaven. Y'all want to understand heaven? Yes. Understanding heaven, we don't, we act like we don't talk about it. So we're going to talk about heaven and hell. We're going to talk about it. Let's see if I can get it because I didn't save this on. Um, to avoid ending up in hell. You want to know it. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and what the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Looks like they did, considering the education system, the military, the you know government, communications, family. Looks like all seven spheres, doesn't it? But Jesus still says the gates of hell will not prevail. And you know why he can say that? Thank you. I didn't want to think I was in here alone. He can say that because he's always counting on the next generation. So this generation may have failed him, but the next won't. Remember the Joshua generation? Because the Joshua generation had the, the first generation that grew up and they were the manna babies that took Jericho. They were superhuman beings. We don't tell you that they were superhuman beings, do we? But they were superhuman beings. 
And while they were growing, can you imagine they're eating this manna? Now, their parents hated it. They wanted steak and blood and carrying on. They want them, can we go to Egypt and get some leeks? They did not like the manna. But what God did with the manna was to keep them from eating death. So they're eating this manna. Now think about it. They're eating this manna. They're getting pregnant. The babies are nursing on milk from this manna. No death. They call it in Psalm, I think it's Psalm 106, angels food. So they were actually eating the bread of heaven, angels food. No death. So as each generation died out, the next generation was full of manna and the mortality that would take them out was gone. So they are acting, they have the same nourishment that the angels have. Angels food, can you imagine? Not that little fluffy cake we like. Just want y'all to understand, I don't do the little fluffy, I like the angel food cake, you know. But I want what they had. So by the time all of the generation that hated God's way died out, he was left with a super army. And that is, and they understood that, which is why they say in John 6, you're Jesus him, but I'm the bread of heaven. They feasted on me. So when it was time, I want you to think about them walking around Jericho, something like a million strong, not talking, walking around Jericho and going home. Now, first of all, we can't do it. We got to give our testimony. We got, <laughs> we got to talk about how our feet hurt, our arthritis is kicking up. <laughs> they had no diseases in them. Can you imagine? No diseases, no susceptibility to diseases. As a matter of fact, when the manna stopped, it was three years. They ate and they could war. They knew nothing but God's consciousness. They had nothing but his hormones, nothing but his neurology, nothing but his neurons, nothing but all of that. The only thing they had left from the natural world is that physical body. And they took out Jericho. Now, I like it because I, I really love this part. I, I don't guess you all know I'm a little bit, uh, just a tad rebellious, slightly. I don't want you to think ill of me. So when people tell me, yeah, but well, those are stories, so are your scientific theories. And you peddling them on us like they law. We know Darwin was wrong. We already understand Darwin. Don't we know Darwin? They have not been able to prove, they st matter of fact, they're trying to backpedal off of it because you can't do AI and believe in Darwin. I told you, I'm not going to be a dumb preacher and I'm not having a dumb church because that a dumb church belongs to Satan because he's the only one that needs humans to be dumb. So they tell me that. I said, but... You all have broken the seal on the human genome. Have you ever seen Darwinism work? Did you ever see a DNA flip and turn into something else? Did you ever see a gene flip and turn into something else? So the biggest lie perpetrated, you know, I studied the whole Darwin thing. So I thought when I got this book, I thought, prophet, I thought I'm gonna learn some science. I love this book, I, I thought. I read the book, and I think it's going to give me the anatomical transmutation explanation. It didn't. He based that on cranes. He left one, he met a crane on Island B, and it looked like this. He went over to Island A, and the crane looked like something else. Based on 100% observation, 
Just observate, not a test, not a test tube. And you know why he worked? Because he came back from the Galapagos with an alternative to Christianity. That is why they bought it. Oh, see, you thought it was like I did. I thought it was intelligent. It wasn't, it wasn't intelligent at all. And from that moment, the scientists found that, see, heaven or hell, I'm telling you, this is where we're stuck. They found an alternative to the Christian church and pushed against theology. Now, I think some of it should have been pushed against. Like, I don't believe that the earth is only 7,000 years old. I just think that, I don't even know where that, whew, that the hell yes come from. But I do know that I've said it to you before, understanding, because if you don't understand his devices, you're a sucker. Because he knows how heaven works. He knows how earth works. He knows how biology works. He knows, and he taught them. He taught humanity in its infancy how all of that worked. And we talk about, now we talk about abortion. Abortion went from being, quote unquote, scientifically proven and legislated to being someone's feelings about their one night stand. I, I mean, it's my body. I should be able to do what I want. But the, of the one that's in you is a body. And it doesn't get a say. It's a body. We talked about California passing the law that you can kill your baby up to 30 days after it's born. If you don't like, if it cries too much, if it has too much colic, they just passed this law. You, they can, you can, a mother can kill her child and not be charged with a crime. And you know why? We let that happen. We, the church, because we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Yet, in the 70s, when the law was passed, there was no science. There was theory. They actually approved abortion on tadpoles. Read the transcript. See, because you that's why we keep getting duped, because we want to stay in church singing. <laughs> they did not find out about the chromosome till 1997, according to our epidemiologists. So how many babies died on a theory? By that time, we've got the profit motive locked in. When you read the transcript, it's an embarrassment. The pastors and theologians that they used couldn't make the case. Could not fight for God. Why are we talking like this? Because we can't fight for Jesus because we're not smart enough. So all they kept doing was quoting scripture. Getting prayer out of school. Same trans, another transcript, stupid. I thought, now God, I was dumb, but I could have done better than that for how they got. Some of you all have read that transcript. If you haven't, you should read these transcripts so because Satan got us here through us wanting to be very narrow-minded and very personal in our religious experience. And so we get prayer out of school because they can't tell people why government needs prayer. They can't tell people why they should have to pray on government grounds on the basis of separation of church and state. Of course, we never read the Constitution, so did we know that it was, they actually reversed it? I'm getting ready to go to the gates of hell. That's why I'm talking like this. When you look at, 
you look at just the logic and we, the Bible says Jesus is the logos. That means logic should come from us. We look at um, African Americans and black people and why so many, especially during my generation of Panthers were mad with Martin Luther King, hated him, hated him. And they hated him because they felt he was making us cowards and allowing the law to do anything they wanted to do with us. However, can we say however? Yes. However, what they didn't tell you was that it was legal for them to kill us. It was on the books. If they bombed us, it would have been legal. He took and he outsmarted the enemy. He took away their reason for killing us. And he let the world change the law. See, half of you didn't know that. So you thought that they just didn't let us buy stuff. But it was legal. I told Norma, I watched the movie Emmett Till. All of you all should watch it. And it was legal for them to kill us. So Martin was a good debater, but he was also cagey. And he said, his whole goal was let the world see how cruel this quote unquote precious country is. And because when they watched them turning the dogs on our kids, that broke the world's heart. You have to be a strategist. You've got to be a tactician and you've got to know your enemy's devices. As we know, not long afterwards, Panthers got their way and ended up with the race riots in the 60s. I want you to know what we're talking about and to read those cases. Homosexuality, well, let me finish with abortion. Abortion doesn't just kill a baby, it kills generations. That's why the lease on America keeps shortening because they're killing the future. So why God's like, so why should I let you have it? You don't need a future because you're killing the populations of the future. Isn't that scary? But that's what we're doing. Oh no, yes you are. Cause those kids, those babies based on creation's laws, Every seed is born with the seed within itself and that with the seed within itself and they're killing it. I was in Great Britain, England. I don't think it was Britain. I don't know, but it was England. They told me it was England, so I was, I'm going with that. And they were, at the time I was there, 20 years ago, they were having problems with male sperm and the male sperm count was shrinking because creation runs on use and need. It provides for what you use and it doesn't provide for what you don't use. These are things, these are points of logic that you don't hear in your church. You're in your church being told how happy God is. God's ticked off. He's not happy. He's happiness. But as far as this generation, he's not all that tickled with us. You're in there talking to him about your calling and your ministry, et cetera, and we're hanging in the balance. Do you realize that if we don't make it, your ministry won't happen? So we do need the country to make it so that we can have a destiny. We can have some children. You think about homosexuality. We saw the transgender whatever proclamation from our president. Not mine. So I rebuke that lie. Not mine. Because he's an agent of death. And he's about death and doom. But you can't tell people what's wrong with homosexuality. It's my, and, and the whole thing is always about my body. Satan has to have homosexuals. Because the angels didn't get wives. 
Isn't that something? They didn't get wives. That's the second reason why they were reproducing. They had to reproduce through Adam's seed. You can't talk to them about the fact that not only is it a satanic ritual, but the fact that it's fecal copulation. They have even made that nice. It's just a little poo, no baby. That's poop, and I'm being nice because I'm on the mic. Because I know what to call it. See, when we stop calling it love because you're looking at them with their little naked shirts on their little young bodies, because you know what? We never feel happy about looking at a flabby homosexual. That doesn't even... Flabby, saggy, you know? It's like when the people say the body is beautiful. Nobody says that about this 400-pound woman whose underwear is covered by her fat. What? Because you don't realize how much you buy the lie and it turns your logic off. It turns your wisdom off. Cause you don't, and now you know, and when they start, no matter how much they try, and they show the the, the big girls and the you know the video girls, the big girl, you still can't get past all that flesh. That thing can't even look slinky when it moves. It's like a sea. Listen, I know. Remember, I dropped a hundred pounds. I'm telling you, I'm not from somebody who doesn't know. Your bones can't remember who you are. You wake up in the morning, they ask, who are you? And should I move? When you think about it, God, uh, the body did not make you, your gender, your Spirit and soul made your gender, which is why when they get sick, they still got to be treated as the gender they were born to. So what did they do? Why am I saying this? What did they do? We coming back to that next time. They took over the gates. They took the gates. Remember, we had all of this teaching. You all could take pictures. We had all this teaching on um, gift versus office. And the pastors were the only one who were allowed to say that they were in an office, even though they only had one mention in the scripture. But I want you to think what they did. They took over the seats of power. Do you understand what they did? So they did not, they actually legitimized themselves and legalized themselves by winning the vote, by running for offices that saints won't run for. So they won. So they, they don't have to be truthful now. They changed the laws. Daniel chapter 7 said that that's what that spirit will do. Did anybody know Daniel 7.25? Say it again. They will seek to change times and law. That's how you know we're under a devil. I wanted you to see these things because we have prayer lists and these aren't on them. But we're intercessors, right? But they're not on them. So I wanted to give you night one, the prayer list. So you could see what we're praying for because when you look up gates, in scripture and you look up 
gates in dictionaries, it is not just an open and closing barrier. Why did they call it water gate? They put gate on the end of political stuff. Why? Because it's access and egress. So here we are right now. What's at the gate? Most of you all, we like, we love saying that. Yeah, you know, because we're storming the gate. No, you, what, which one? Does that sound good? Storming in the gates. Yeah, what, which one? Because all of these gates have a prince. They all have a principality that's guarding them. So the first gate, the highest gate, is sovereignty, the head of state. Well, we let that one slide through. The next gate, law, Supreme Court, justices that are okaying lies, education, transgenderism for kids, governance, Senate, House, court, false or wrong decisions, justice, let's look at Donald Trump, commerce, let's look at big business, especially big pharma, diplomacy, let's look at our international relations and let's look at what used to be, where we used to be a world power, we're now wrestling with China and Russia. Prophecy, how about the divinations and the devil's words on how this is going to play out? Oh, y'all didn't think of that either, did you? Media, you can't get away from homosexuality, perversion, uncleanness, no matter how you try. Your favorite show got the sneak, the two, the two men and the two women. He wrapping up and, and, and they sitting there swapping feces. And the women are just buying false penises. Come on here. I'm going to sit down in a minute, okay, y'all? <laughs> I'm going to sit down in just a minute, okay? You know why I do that? I need, we need shock theology because you hear it everywhere else. You hear it in your jobs. You hear that. But in the pulpit, we don't tell you. So you, don't, you think we're somehow exempt or ex excluded or, or insulated. You're talking about, I, I, there's a site, when you go to it, the things they do, one of, one of the sites said they freeze the menses and then suck it as a penis. See, Satan, Satan's a vile devil, but when, if you don't have Jesus, you don't know that. As far as you're concerned, it's the devil's kids. What? Oh, you know what? I should have put a disclaimer on this. <laughs> I should have put, hey, y'all, put a dis. Thank you, Dave. He said he got me. <laughs> we need a disclaimer on this hip puppy. <laughs> civics. We have the Democratic Party to tell us what civics are like. I found the Socialist Democratic Party and the Communist Democratic Party. Do you know half of the Democrats don't know that? Community. Well, just look at the battles, the wars, the cancel culture and all of that. Worship. Well, we understand the ritualism of occultism, pantheism, polytheism. Religion, Satan's way of freezing Christianity and unleashing all of our rivals and adversaries. So you can't walk this office if you can't say what God's issues are, because then are we sure you praying for? Almost done. Spirituality, other gods, occultism, society in general, and the latest beast, science and technology. I know that you found that, so I'm gonna, you can take a picture of this as well. We'll pick up on this one next time. But I want you to see what the problem is. 
the smartest people in creation started out as God's prophets and later his apostles. It was a prophet that said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was a prophet. It was an apostle that says, in the beginning was the word. Intelligence came from the almighty. When we had yet to get to Genesis 6, where the angels of God married the daughters of men, the prophetic was running the planet. Yet today we have prophetic classes and it's like what three weeks three months maybe read a book attend a meeting and yet you can't help God fight this you you can't even recognize how it's showing up we've had the battle of the gift versus the office and I always use this example for all the years that I've been a prophet we've had this argument about gift versus office and I've always, God said, but I started offices first because gifts serve the office. Part of why people are angry with the prophetic is the gifters because we haven't been out there. Most of these people who are talking are not prophets. They're gifters. They're prophesiers. They're not prophets. They don't discharge the office because not every prophet in scripture had a word, had a prophecy. And when you study the word and break the terminology down, office, the Old Testament, Nabi, N-A-B-I, Nabiim, they were actual officials of the state. You didn't know that either, did you? Officials of the state. It's important that we recognize how wrong we've been. The Joe Biden has always said he was going to do this ugliness. If you read how much he hated black folk in the 70s, you'd wonder why he has any Democrats. Hated black folk. You know, politics requires you to lie. But as long as he was in office, he was a gift. I mean, a, 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 what do you call it, campaigner, candidate, he was a gift. None of his words mattered. They made the news, they might have stoked our flames, but they didn't matter. They didn't move our state. They didn't move our nation. But when he got in the White House, he had an executive order party. That must have been his shut-in. Because he had the power of the office at his disposal and because he's got the power of the office at his disposal he can write what he wants it may not get through the legislator but then again it may Obama okay the LGBTQ on executive or we still never voted for that that never came up on our, we never, nobody asked us. Nobody gave us a vote and none of our politicians stood on that ground and fought for us. Not one. That was a, that's a constitutional change. That wasn't just a party decision. And he signed the paper. We all remember the, the clip and made homosexuality legal, knowing that transgenderism and our kids were going to be the object and the goal. I still say, as an American, I need y'all to get on a ballot. We need to be able to vote y'all, and because it's executive order, we can't vote you out. That is why the church keeps losing. That is why we don't fight because, wow, we're living in this puffy land, this little fun land in Jesus country, being homegrown. We're domestic. We're the kids at home letting dad go to work and fight it himself. 
So where are we with this? All of these came from hell. I said to you that the occult is a crime. All of these came from that criminal organization. I wouldn't have called it a crime. But God does. Lucifer was a criminal. He invented it. He created it, right? Yeah, right? God, why would God fight himself? He wouldn't fight himself. So why would he go to multiply himself as the antithesis of who and what he is? Jesus himself, he said, no, occultism's a crime. He said, and I raised up the church to be my crime fighters. And instead of being his crime fighters, we're crying and whining and hiding all the time. I pray that by the time we get to this 30 days, we can do that. Those of you who are listening to us as God is calling you to fight, he's calling you to a public office, you need to do it. Because you're not doing this for this era. Much of what's happening is gonna take us decades to reverse. Decades, hell is in the high seat. And the gates of hell look like they're doing a pretty good job of obliterating us. But aren't we glad it ain't over? It's not over. Because God has fought this before. He will fight it again. Father, I ask that you have your way with all of these days that every speaker will speak your heart, your soul, your spirit, your experience with your creaturehood. Lord, give us the prayers to pray, the words to say, the messages to preach and prophesy. Lord, take the spirit of cowardice out of our midst. Take the cup of trembling out of our hands. And Lord, replenish us with that first fire, that first power. Holy Ghost, deliver our souls. That which is not saved, I'm asking that you would save them. That which has to be born again for real, I'm asking you to, to grant them repentance. And most importantly, God, I'm thanking you for this platform and I'm asking you to keep us going and let us not be fearful. We bind up every work of darkness. I disassemble every assembling force. I command every spirit that is obeying a witch to be stripped from her and I remand you to the abyss. I command every devil that is providing sorcery and every other occultic art or tactic against us. I speak to every one of you all and I command you to the abyss. This. I could dispatch the angels of God to put you under Holy Ghost arrest and get you off of our planet. We close your access points. We close the appetites for you. We shut it down. Yeah, no. We shut it down by the Holy Ghost. And God, I thank you that you raise up the sons and daughters of faith, the children who believe you, who know who you are, who are ready to do great exploits for you because they know you and that you are the true and righteous God. And Lord, I thank you for blessing everyone here tonight and enabling them to go home safely. And Lord, I thank you also for keeping these words and this teaching in their hearts. And I bless you for giving me the wisdom and the knowledge to say it and to articulate it in a way that this generation needs to hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Where's the woman that does all of this other stuff? Where is she? Oh, there you go. All right. Come on, give God praise. Yes. Come on, you can do better than that on your feet. Yes. We thank you, Chief Apostle, for this powerful word tonight. Um, and we're going to have our leaders uh, come forward because we want to pray for those every night doing these uh 30 days of worship, we're going to offer personal prayer. So we're going to have our leaders come down to the front. And if you uh, want to receive salvation today, you can do that. Be filled with the uh, Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Leaders, come forward as well. Uh, you can do that tonight. And Or you just want personal prayer. We want you to be recognized and understand that you can have prayer with us. Um, if, are there any other announcements, Apostle Ashley? Okay, well, join us tomorrow at what time? 
6.30 sharp as we begin our second day of 30 days of worship. Come on and give God praise in here. And before you leave, make sure you greet someone. Don't just rush out. Give someone a hug and just let them know, hello, thank you for coming. And we're glad we, and also I forgot to say this, we have visitors in the house this evening as well. Thank you for coming. We thank you for coming. Make sure you bring someone because it's going to be a 30 nights where we're just allowing God to have his way. You are dismissed. Oh, yeah. And also follow the uh, leading of the ushers. Okay. Uh, well, he is still kind of there. He's, he's getting ready to be moved. Okay. You can come down the middle aisle and uh, Charnel right here. Hold your hand up, Miss Charnel. She'll be leading the way.
Good evening, family. How is everyone doing today? Hope everyone is doing well. I don't see any uh, prayer requests, but if you do have them, I am Prophet in Training Rachel Purefoy, and I will be. Oh, here we go. All right. Wonderful. Here we go. All right. We have Wamikia for prayer for her daughter, for her daughters to receive the Holy Ghost and her other three daughters to get a, a strong, much needed refresher of the Holy Ghost. I think that's what that should say. Yes. So, Father, I do pray for Wamikia's daughters. I pray that you uh, will cover. Okay. You will fill them with your Holy Spirit. You will fill them, Lord, with your power. You will fill them with your might. God, I'm praying for, even if there needs to be a uh, renewal of salvation and a renewal of relationship with you, I pray, Father, that they would that, that they would be drawn to you in this hour of their life. Lord, I shut down all of the barriers and the, the things that are hindering their ability to uh to draw close to you, um, pulling out distractions, friends, uh, social media, television, and even uh, extracurricular activities that are interfering with them being in church and being where your spirit is. God, I pray today for even just that uh, boldness for Mamikia to stand up for her children and to stand up for you with her children. I pray God that you give her the strength and the and even the clarity to speak to them in a way that would uh, give them a realization of just how important it is to be connected with you, especially in this hour when the enemy is uh, is intentionally taking out this generation. So I pray, Father, even the now that you give her the strength and you give her the courage to stand up for for her faith and her salvation, and that it would be an example to her daughters that they would too desire to be those that are close to you. And I pray, Lord, that um, as they draw close to you, that your spirit would, they would be engaged with your spirit and they would know that it is you. And I shut down any interloping spirits. I shut down witchcraft and, and, and devils and all familiar spirits and generational things that would try to attach them, try to attach itself to that connection and that relationship that you are uh, really crafting with these ladies. And I thank you, Father, that as you continue to draw close to them and they draw close to you, that uh, their confidence in their faith and their identity in Jesus Christ would grow. But first and foremost, God, we do draw them into that redemption. We draw them into salvation and truly, God, knowing that they have been saved and filled with your Holy Spirit. So I thank you, Father, for each one of them. Lyric, Cam, and Moni. I think that's what you, their names there. And uh, Nigeria. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing them. But I just thank you, Father, that each one of these daughters would be able to know you and know who you are. And not just as familiar, but have that, that relationship with you, that, that connection with you, Lord, that only they can have with you, that, that relationship that you have with each one of your children. So I bless you, Father, for it. And I thank you for that drawing in this season of their life in Jesus name. I thank you, Father, for Lynn. I'm praying for her to be obedient, that her soul would be converted unto Jesus Christ to truly be on the Lord's side and to fight for him. So Father, first and foremost, I thank you for salvation. I will I will direct you all, um, just as this is coming up, I will direct you all to the church website, congregationofthemighty.com, and the prayer of salvation is there. Um, this is a uh, the salvation prayer that our chief apostle led the young people through on uh, on just this past Sunday, and I and I believe Lynn that also 
just so there just I believe that the Lord is really drawing many people in this hour to that true salvation because a lot of people are churched but they're not saved as we are learning from our chief apostle and praying that prayer so I would direct you all to that and uh we'll make it for your daughters have them go and and pray that prayer because that is really going to begin that shift we really need to in this hour some people need to recommit and re uh and and be brought into that relationship with Jesus Christ through true salvation prayer so um, I will start there, but Father, I just thank you for Lynn. I just wanted to put that out there. So Lynn, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for Lynn, and I pray that in this hour, that as you are converting her, as you are have taken her through that redemption process, that she is now truly seeking you and is being redeemed. She is being converted unto Jesus Christ. That the true Jesus Christ will begin to come in and speak to her. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to lead her and guide her through your word, that she becomes stronger and she become more powerful in her understanding and her knowledge of who you are, that as she knows her identity in you and that she begins to have that true faith that comes from believing in the true and living God, that her soul would be shifted, her soul would be converted. I thank you, Lord, that you are cleansing out the past. You're purifying her. You're purging out all of the things, Lord, that have hindered her from truly being obedient to you and choosing you and choosing your your side. I pray God today that as she releases the pains and the hurts of the past, as she releases the things that have been done to her, as she releases the things that she has done to herself and the guilt and the, the self guilt and the self doubt that she even holds against, uh, holds against herself. As she releases that God, I thank you that she begin to see herself truly on your side and at that position. She is in that place, Lord God, of deciding that she once and for all is going to do what it is that you have called her to do. I pray, God, that you bind her to your word and you bind her to the things that you have. she has said that she would do and the things that you have said. If you, then I. I thank you, Father, for doing that in Lynn's life in this season. Stay faithful and stay committed to him. And I thank you, Lord, that as she is faithful to you, that she will truly begin to rise up as that warrior for you. And she begin to see, Lord, the, the things and the assaults that you are taking and that she would be one who fights to see to it that you get the portion and you get the, uh, the harvest on the souls and the people that you are drawing in this hour in Jesus name. Hello, Peggy. Praying for Peggy, her understanding and how to quicken her mind so that she's able to manifest the word of God in her life. So I thank you, Father, for just uh, taking her, Peggy into that new level of understanding in your word. I'm praying, Father, for the, uh, the Bible study, the time that she needs to spend in her word, the time that she needs to uh, spend with the scriptures. Lord, I pray that uh, that, that time begin to be... Um, precious to her, sacred to her, and that she would not give it up for anything and that she would be, that she would, she would just be so drawn to your word in this season, Lord, that it is changing her. It's changing her mind. It's changing even the understanding and the things that she's learned from years ago and, and the, in her upbringing, Father, I pray that as she is digging deeper into the scriptures and as she is digging deeper into the knowledge and understanding of your word that uh that the scales become it will become begin to come off and her understanding would be able to go to the next level i come against um all of the things that would try to sit on her understanding and try to make it so that she cannot i thank you father that even though your word and the and your revelation and your understanding is complex, that her mind be able to tap into your spirit to to receive the understanding that she needs to be able to move forward and continue to uh, just be so excited about what you're showing her, Lord. I'm praying for not for not only the under her understanding to grow, but her excitement for your word, that she would truly want to be one who shares the gospel and wants to be one who will share it with those around her, her family, her friends, her children. And, and even those who ha themselves are having doubts in their words, but that 
doubt in your of your word that she would be one who because you are opening up her understanding would be able to encourage others to stick to the word of God and begin to themselves begin to dig deeper into it. So I thank you, Father, for uh, just that refreshing in this season, this refreshing in this time of a passion for the scriptures, a love for the scriptures, a uh, just a newfound um, desire for the word of God that she cannot put it down and that she would be able, Lord, to dig deeper into what it is that you have for her in this season to understand in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, praying for healing of the left side for PIT Francine in the muscular and skeletal systems of her body. God, I come against physical attack, physical hindrance, physical, just a, a, a slowing down and delay on her purpose and plans due to physical ailment. Lord, I shut that down in Jesus name. I say that uh, infirmity would not be her portion in this hour, but healing and deliverance would be. Lord, I thank you, Father, for even if there needs to be a shift in just something that she's taking in in her diet that is hindering, that is causing the pain, that is causing for there to be issue. Lord, I'm praying that you open her eyes to see that. I thank you, Father, that she be able to, even as a prophet in training, be able to lay hand upon herself. P.I.T. Francine, this is your mantleship working. I thank you, Father, that as she is able to lay hand on herself, that she begin to feel the power that you have installed in her to be able to relieve the pain. And God, I pray for the answers that she needs. If she needs to go through some physical therapy, Father, I pray for the resources, the finances, the insurance, whatever is needed, Lord, to be able to cover the cost of the physical therapy. I pray, Lord, for the cost for massage or uh, that kind of treatment, Lord, that needs to happen to the the tissue in that in on that left side of her body, God. But I pray for wholeness and healing 100% that nothing would hinder her ability to do her job and to supply, be able to supply her economy, but also got to be able to do the things that you need her to do, that she would not be hindered in her physical ability to get to her studies, to be in just to be able to every day sit and do what she needs to do. So I thank you, Father, for healing supernal healing, 100% wholeness in PIT Francine's body in Jesus's name. Hallelujah. Praying for Deborah Ashcroft, praying for her granddaughter, Maddie, to seek after Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this young lady, Maddie. I pray, God, that even the now you are hedging her in, you're covering her and you're protecting her, Lord, that, that she be able to draw into your spirit. I pray that you are drawing her in this hour, Lord, as your daughter and that she is able, Lord, to really be able to have some. She has a lot of questions about who you are. She has a lot of questions about God. She, and so I pray, Father, that the questions that are on her heart, even the questions that are hindering her, the questions about death, the questions about loss, the questions about pain, the questions about abuse, the questions about poverty and lack, all of these questions that are just bombarding her in this, in this, in this time of her life, God, I'm praying that you be able to give her answers as she seeks you, Lord. And I pray Jesus that you would, uh, you would just begin to speak to her through her grandmother and, and just even your people that you have in the different spheres that she goes in school, work, uh, all of her hobbies where she is that Lord, you will send your agents out to answer the questions that as you are drawing her in this hour, that you, that you would God be able to speak to the questions that are on her heart. And I pray God that she would not fear you or your answers but that she would be able to accept what it is that you say and recognize that it doesn't change your goodness. It doesn't change your power. It doesn't change your sovereignty or your authority, regardless of the responses and the answers to the questions that are on her heart. And she would see God that you are still good in the midst of all of those things. And I pray that for her in Jesus name. And I pray, I just pray, uh, uh, 
pray against that struggle, the struggle with those difficult situations that she's seen or heard about and cannot believe that you, God, would allow them. I pray, Lord, that you would begin to speak to that in her life and you would show her, Lord, that you are still good no matter what. In Jesus' name, I pray. She has a lot of questions, Deborah, a lot of questions. And um, don't be afraid of her questions because she does need somebody to listen to her and listen to those questions because a lot of people just kind of push her away because she has a lot of questions. And And that's pushing her away from God. So in this hour, I'm just praying for your compassion and your heart for her to be able to sit and listen and, and not, and not necessarily, it's not a, it's not about judgment. It's about just being able to hear her out. She needs a sounding board. And so I pray for your ability to listen and hear what she has to say and not, and that your emotions would not rise up and cause for her to to have an adverse response to God, but that she would be able to see that God is not afraid of her questions because of the power of the Holy Ghost moving in you to sit and listen and not talk her out of what it is that is on her heart, but is to be able to listen and, and gain full understanding of what it is that is plaguing her and giving her that challenge of drawing close to Jesus Christ. So I thank you, Father, for just that bond and that relationship that you would build between Deborah and her granddaughter through this season of questions. And I pray, God, for peace for Deborah, that she is able to sit and she is able to be just that peace for her granddaughter in this season of her life. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Lord, I pray for Sherry for healing in her right hip. God, I thank you even the now that you are sending the the your healing balm of Gilead to Sherry right now to that right hip. God, I thank you, Father, for making the adjustments by your spirit, but also the adjustments that can be made by that physical touch of a chiropractor or a doctor or a physical therapist. Lord, I pray even the now that as she is able to to go and visit. I pray, Lord, for the resources as well for her, Lord, to do what she needs to do. Massage, physical therapy, uh, exercise, water aerobics, whatever it is, God, I'm praying even now that you begin to open up her understanding of how she can heal, how she can heal herself by your wisdom. So I pray, God, for wisdom and, and even things that she may need to adjust in her life. Maybe it's the, the weight of whatever baggage she's carrying every day, or if she's, if there's a, some, a, you just needing to take an elevator instead of stay or whatever it is, God, I'm praying just for wisdom in this season for her physical body that she is able to carry out the tasks in her life that she herself would not be delayed or slowed down in accomplishing your will and accomplishing the duties and tasks that you have given her, God, not just her work, not just family obligations, but God, even the things that you're calling her to in this hour to do with in in her local community, Lord, I thank you that as you're making her a light and a beacon in, in her community, that she is not stopped from doing the things that will draw people to you because she's unable to attend or she's unable to be a part because of the physical element. I shut down the plans of the enemy through physical pain for Sherry's life. And I thank you, Jesus, for sending in your healing touch that she is able to fulfill the purpose and destiny on her life in Jesus' name. Hello, Piper. Praying for direction for what God wants to do next. Yes, Lord, I thank you for your wisdom. Even now, I thank you for dreams. I thank you for visions. I thank you for people even coming into her sphere, Lord, that will be able to speak to what it is that you are doing in her life now. I thank you, Father, first and foremost, for the consecration and the fasting and praying that you are drawing Piper to in this hour to be able to hear clearly what it is that you are saying to her. Lord, I I pray against the dread. And I pray against just the uh, the lack of desire to 
do the fast and do the consecration. I pray God that you give her the ex excitement for it, excitement for spending the next 10 days with you, the next 25 days in consecration. Now, fasting and consecration, they go together. They're not necessarily the exact same thing. So I pray God that you even give her understanding of that because there's a 10 day fast and then a total 25 day. So an additional 15 days of consecration that the Lord needs from you, Piper. And I pray God that as she does that, that she would truly see uh, clearly what it is that you need her to do and the steps that she needs to take to be able to uh, get into the position that she needs to get. And there's a specific timing. And so I pray God that she will not miss her window. She will not miss the time and she will not miss the opportunity to do what it is that you have called her to do in this season. I pray God for her faith. I pray for her energy and her stamina to keep going and to keep pressing as you are giving her uh, the wisdom for the next uh, 25 days, but an additional, the time of what it is that you're calling her to do. So I thank you, Father, for Piper, uh, her excitement to serve you, her excitement to be on your side, her excitement to obey the will of the Lord, and that she truly, God, is um, her faith, her faith for it is um, is bubbling up. I thank you, God, that her faith is bubbling up for what you want to do. So I pray, God, that you continue to just cover her, protect her, protect all that is around her during these 25 days of fasting and consecration. And I pray, God, that she be sealed from the enemy and that nothing will distract her, nothing will keep her, God, from seeking your face each and every day. In your name I pray. Amen. Yes, let's see. Praying for Lisa. Lisa Leek, pray for you. her youngest son. Deliverance and salvation. He's battling with fentanyl and heroin. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you even now. Mm, by the blood of Jesus, that this young man is delivered from addiction. I pray against the spirit of addiction that has traveled down his family line. And I pray, Lord, that as you are in this hour, sending in your healing power, even of the soul things, the things in the in the soul that have driven this man to seek substance. I pray, God, that you send in a mentor, you send in an advocate, you send in a friend, you send in a loved one, you send someone, God, to be there with him and to walk him through this, this difficult season of his life. I pray, God, for, uh, for him to not have to battle this alone. I pray against that that loneliness, that isolation that the enemy draws those who suffer with addiction to, that they believe that nothing else will be able to help them. No one else will be able to help them. I pray God now that you send in a stronger man to help him rise up out of this and, and be fully delivered and healed in Jesus name. I thank you, God, even the now that you give Lisa peace for her son that as she cries in the night season, as she is, she is pleading with you, God, for her son. I pray that you give her peace and you give her hope that he will be healed and he will be delivered. I pray, God, that you give her the strength to do the hard things and make the hard decisions that need to be made and that she will not be swayed by the enemy to believe that she is doing anything wrong, but that she is doing what is best for this young man's life to be healed and delivered. I give sin strength. I send courage to Lisa now, God, that you will give her the ability to fight for her son in the spirit and in the natural. I thank you, Lord, that she would, there would be a rising up in her spirit as a mother to 
to see to it that her child not go to hell, that her child not die before his time, that this, this young man would be who he is called to be. And I thank you, Father God, for the resources, the access to, to uh, rehab, the access to counseling, the access to rehabilitation in not just, not just physically in his body from the drugs, but also for that rehabilitation in his soul. God, I thank you. Now we send it in. We send it by the blood of Jesus. We send it by the power of God. We send it I send it, Lord, as a prophet in training of this commission. I send now the angels. I send them now in Jesus' name that this man be delivered, delivered and healed in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, that we will see this man in a new place and in a new a new light. And he even would see himself. I pray, God, that you give him visions of himself healed, delivered, and 100% free of these addictions in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, Okay, let's see. generational. Victoria, are you asking for prayer for six sons, alcohol alcohol addiction and salvation? Because I'm going to pray for that right now in Jesus name. Yes, God, I'm, I'm thanking you that you are moving now by the spirit of the living God. For those who are suffering with addiction, these young men, what I pray now in Jesus name that this that as Victoria stands as an intercessor for her sons, God, that she is fighting for them to be free and delivered, Lord, that no longer will this continue on. I pray, God, that she has the she too has the strength and the courage to to fight against this this devil that is wanting to take out these men. I pray in, in Jesus name for healing and deliverance for these men as well. I call even for salvation, Lord. I'm praying for salvation. I'm praying for their salvation. I'm praying for their redemption. I am praying in Jesus name that these men be saved and healed and delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost and filled God with your power that they no longer desire alcohol, that they no longer desire to want to drink and and to party and and be in all sorts of places that are being led by other spirits other than you God I thank you in Jesus name that the desire for you Jesus Christ would rise up in them as their mother fights for their salvation I I'm praying I I'm a mother I'm a mother of young children but I'm a mother and we as parents must pray continuously for our children's salvation. Do not stop praying, Victoria, for your sons. Pray each and every day for them. Pray multiple times a day. When when the Holy Spirit puts one of them on your heart, pray. I thank you, God, that the intercession of Victoria would rise up in this hour and that she would pray, God, nonstop for them that until they are saved and delivered and healed in Jesus name. And uh, the Lord says to get a journal and begin to write each one of their names out. And, and each day that you pray for them, mark it with the date, keep a prayer journal for them and pray for them to be delivered of addiction and for them to be saved and see You put it on the paper and you continue to believe God. I'm praying for Victoria's faith to rise up in this season of of intercession as you are calling her to be an intercessor for her sons, that as she is rising up in this, that she have record God of her prayers for them. She has has record God and she is keeping, and as you keep your promises to her, Lord, and she keeps her promises to you, that she will see God them saved. She will see them, God, healed and delivered in Jesus name. So I thank you, Father, for these men and their salvation. 
and the day, God, that you are drawing them to you. And, and we just bless you, God, for your power, your might, and your sovereignty, Lord, because it's all in your timing. And we, we continue to pray, God, for repentance and salvation for these men in Jesus' name. So, yes, I cover each and every one of you online tonight. I pray, God, that you will cover each uh, of their family members. Lord, all the prayers that are on the altars for family, all the prayers that are on the altar for their lives and for the things that they need. Lord, I'm praying that you begin to answer by fire. We thank you, Lord, as our chief apostle declared yesterday, that you are the God that's going to answer us by fire. So I pray, God, that we prepare ourselves to be, to to receive the fire of God in our lives. And Lord, that it will burn up all the chaff and it will truly, God, show us the the precious metals, the golds, the silvers, that it will show us the diamonds, it will show us the gems, Lord, that you have in our lives, the things that have continued, that continually produce for you and continually to and continue to do the things that they need to do for you in our lives and that we would be those who love you and serve you. And we, Lord God, at the end of this 30 days will be uh, assured that we are on your side, not just in thought and in theory, but God, that we truly are those that are there for you and that we are doing what it is that we need to do to stay on your side. So I bless you, Father, and give you glory, honor, and praise for the, these online members and those tuning in tonight. And I pray, God, that each night that as they tune in, that they are continued to be converted, they are continued to be delivered, they are continue to be healed in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father. Oh, I see Veronica. Oh, she's she's just sending up a prayer for for Victoria's sons. Hallelujah. So, God, I just bless you for these online members. I just continue to send our love here from Tulsa to you all online. And we just bless each one of you continue to stick with these 30 days. And uh, we just ended our 10 days of prayer. So we're looking for the fruit of those 10 days. And we're now shifting into these 30 days. So tune in if, if you're able. Obviously, those, you'll be able to replay if you're not able to tune in live. But I bless you all and just send a, send our love here from the Congregation of the Mighty in Tulsa to our online members. God bless. Have a good evening. <laughs>